previously on has Water Your Soil. Let's say you have a family, you go out and you spend $100 at the grocery store, which is definitely possible during these times with inflation and the price of goods and services being so high. So you go out and you spend that $100. That's already 400 points just for going out and doing that. So the points tally up fast with the gold card. You also get three times points back when you book a flight through Amex or directly with an airline. So that's also big. Three times points back. You figure for that. Hey, what's going on out there? I'd like to welcome every single one of you to Water Your Soil. So if you're new to this channel, I have two rules over at this channel that my subscribers are aware of. The first rule is to always use your own discretion when it comes to credit cards and your FICO credit report. Also, rule number two is to always verify and research what you learn on this channel, any other channel, or anywhere. That's for your own doing. So always verify what you learn because there's a lot of misinformation going around. So verifying what you learn with multiple sources will actually help you out. And it's actually for your betterment. But getting into the video, this video is going to be about how you can increase your FICO credit score for the 2024 calendar year. Now, I know some of you may be watching this and you're probably thinking like, what do you mean increase it for 2024? We're still in November of 2023. Well, it's always good to get a head start on the next year and the previous year. Usually, the way how it works, especially with goals, you usually have to put in a certain amount of work before you actually start seeing results. And if you're someone that's new to credit scoring and you don't know much about FICO credit scoring, you don't know how FICO credit scoring work, you're not familiar with the five categories that go into your FICO credit score, you're probably just thinking like, hey, you can just go and do one magic thing, like maybe go and delete things off of your credit report, like a lot of that information is going around. But it's more to credit scoring than going and deleting items off of your credit report. And over here at this Word of Your Soil channel, I like to teach more about how credit scores come about and how credit scores are determined. Because if you know how a credit score is determined, that will help you in ways to increase your FICO credit score. Now, those of you who are new to this channel, you're probably wondering like, hey, what qualifies you to tell us about FICO credit scoring and how to increase our FICO credit score? I'll provide you with a little bit of my background for those of you who are new here. I started off my journey around 2015 and I had a 549 credit score. And with that 549 credit score, it took me three and a half years to go from the 500s to the 800s. I'm currently sitting in the 800s with my FICO credit score. So I have the experience. I started from the bottom and then I worked my way up. It didn't happen overnight. It took multiple years. And this is going on almost 10 years of experience with this. So with those nearly 10 years of experience, I have been helping people do the same thing that I have done, which is go from poor credit to good and excellent credit. And that's what I plan on doing with you all in this video. So if you don't know how credit scoring works, one of the first things you want to do is you want to go and download your credit report from Experian, Equifax and TransUnion. Those are the three major credit bureaus or credit reporting agencies. Either way you want to call it, that's what they are. So you want to go and download your credit report from there and you can do so at annualcreditreport.com. They usually allow you to get at least one credit report per year. They used to have it where you could get it every month. I don't know if they still have it that way, but during the past couple of years, that's how it was. You can go and get it every month. Now it may have changed back to annually. I haven't been on there in a while, but previously it was every month so if it is back to annually and you haven't checked your credit report in 2023 through their website that's the first thing that you want to do that's always going to be where i refer people to back to their credit report because your credit report tells everything it's like an mri or an x-ray it's going to tell everything regarding your credit score whether it's good or bad now i always tell my subscribers i always tell them and let them know you can have two credit scores. You both can have a 760. You got one person over here, person A, and person B. They both have a 760. And I can almost guarantee you that their credit reports don't look the same 
because when it comes to credit scoring, scores could be similar. However, it's usually credit reports are different. And why are credit reports different? Because we're all individuals. We all apply for different accounts at different times. We all have different balances on different accounts. We all manage those accounts differently. And as a result, our credit reports are different. And that's why I always tell people who are new to credit scoring, do not strictly pay attention to credit scores. When I see people I always tell people, hey, increase your credit score by 100 points by doing this or increase your credit score by 200 points by doing this. I think like, hey, how is that possible for everyone? Because everyone's credit report is different. It would be very hard for everyone to see the same specific result in numbers. So one person may end up 70 points. The next may do 100. The next may do 50. The next may only do 20. The next person, their score may not increase. So I don't like to do that over here on this channel. I don't like to tell people a specific number their score can increase by. But that information is out there. Like I said earlier in this video, verify what you come across. But after you do download your three credit reports, look for things that are out of place. What I mean out of place, meaning information that is incorrect on your credit report. So make sure that all your accounts are correct, meaning the account number, as well as the names on your credit report, as well as your address, your personal information, as well as how long you've had those accounts. Make sure all of that information is verified as being correct the next thing that you want to look for on your credit report is your balances because I know a lot of you out there are going to have balances on your credit report and that's the next area that you really want to target on because as I always tell my subscribers your credit report is basically based on how well you manage the debt you have what is the debt that you have the debt that you have is your accounts that you have so whether it's your credit card account or it's your student loan or it's your auto loan or it's your home loan, whatever accounts that it is that you have on your credit report, your credit score is going to be a factor of that. In fact, 65 percent of your credit score is going to be based on if you're making payments on those accounts and if you're paying on time. And a lot of times, you know, people are not paying on time or they're not paying in full. So that's one thing that you want to make sure you want to go and see how much debt you owe on your accounts. And when it comes to this, you want to try to factor in a way to start chopping down on some of the debt that you have, because if your score is not in a good or excellent range, there's a high possibility, not a guaranteed possibility, but a high possibility that somewhere you have a heavy amount of debt on your credit report or you don't have enough accounts on your credit report it's usually one of those two things and people try to run from it you know they'll go and they'll try to dispute those accounts or they'll try to you know get them wiped off of their credit report but those are your credit accounts especially if they're currently active so one thing you want to do is make sure that you are chopping down on your debt Another thing, if you have credit cards, and this goes to a lot of you because a lot of you do have credit cards, not only do you want to chop down on your credit card debt, preferably pay off all of your credit cards, what you want to start doing on a month-to-month -month basis when you get your statement is start paying your statement balance in full because a lot of people, they don't want to do that. They'll just carry over a balance from month-to-month. -month. Now, it's your business if you can't afford to do it then I say you shouldn't have a credit card. But if you already have the credit card, then you're going to be getting interest for carrying over balances on a month to month basis. I can't fault you because I know what the economy is right now. And some people are not in the financial position to pay off their statement balance in full every month. But for those of you who are, if you are in a financial position to pay off your credit card statement balance in full every single month, do so. And don't skip a month doing it. Make sure you do it every single month. If you go out and you spend $1,000 on your credit card and you get billed, your statement says you owe $1,000. It's your full statement. Make sure you pay that in full. When it comes to you paying your bill, they give you that option. They ask you if you want to pay your full balance, you want to pay the minimum, or you want to pay the statement balance. Always select the statement balance if you have the funds 
to pay your statement balance in full. And this will help you not only avoid paying interest, it also will help you in regards to certain things such as what I'm going to talk about next, and that's credit card utilization. A lot of you out there who have credit cards may have never heard of utilization. Credit card utilization is important. Credit card utilization simply breaks down to how much of your credit card's limit are you using? Let's say you have a credit card limit of $5,000. So it's a percentage. So let's say out of that $5,000, you go and you spend $500. That means you have a utilization of 10% on that card. Let's say you go and you spend $5,000. That means you're maxing out your credit card and you have a utilization of 100. Whatever you do, do not max out your credit card. Now, when it comes to utilization, it can get pretty tricky because some people, they like to pay their balances before their statement is due and they like to pay their balances before their bill. So they'll go out and they'll spend close to that five thousand dollars, but they'll pay it off immediately. So if you're doing it that way, that's your business. You know, it's not just one way to do this. And that's what I want you all to know. It's not just one way to go about it, but make sure you are keeping your utilization under 10 percent. So 10 percent or less. Now, this is going to show up on your credit report. They'll let you know what your utilization is. It's going to tell you so you can monitor it on a month to month basis. In fact, you should monitor it on a month to month basis. So to recap, you want to make sure that you're paying down your balances on your accounts. You also want to make sure that you are paying your statement balances in full. You also want to make sure you are watching your credit card utilization. Keep it at 10 percent or less. Another thing that you want to make sure that you're doing outside of doing those things, if you want to increase your credit score in 2024, is you want to make sure that you're cautious of adding extra accounts because those hired increase can add up and impact you in the short term. Maybe not necessarily long term, but in the short term, they will. And one word of advice that I always throw out to people, if you have accounts that are in good standing, you know what good standing is. Good standing means that you're paying on time and you're not being late on paying on these accounts. If you do have those accounts, make sure you're not closing out those credit card accounts because I know some people, they're like, hey, I'm not getting what I want from these cars anymore, so I'm going to just close them out. If they have a good lengthy credit history on them, like at least five years or more, you may want to consider not closing it out. Now, after all, like I said, use your own discretion. I can't tell you what to do. I'm not a financial advisor. But if it was up to me, I'm not closing out accounts because I think long term and long term, meaning that I can have a long and lengthy credit age if I simply manage my accounts the correct way and leave them open, especially when it comes to credit card accounts. So it will help you in the long run to have a credit card account that's active and not only active, but in good standing because credit age usually contributes to a lot of people having good credit scores. You know who have the best credit scores in the US right now? Take a guess which generation has the best credit scores. The generation with the best credit scores right now are the baby boomers. And one of the main reasons why the baby boomers have the best credit accounts, not only are their balances down when it comes to what they owe, but they simply have the longest credit age. So that's further proof right there that the longer your credit accounts stay open, the better. So hopefully this video helps you out when it comes to increasing your FICO credit score in 2024. I don't have a magic fix. I'm not going to say, oh, send this dispute letter or oh, get this removed or deleted. No, I teach about FICO credit scoring around here. I do have other videos. I have a section called Credit Card Help for Beginners. It's a playlist on the homepage of this Water Your Soil channel. It's filled with information and videos regarding utilization, when to pay, how much you should pay, all types of things. So check out that section on my homepage. It's a playlist. It's called Credit Card Help for Beginners. It will help you out greatly. You can just look at one video and it will continue to show you videos. But this is Water Your Soil. I hope all of you do accomplish a good credit score in 2024. If you're new here and you feel in the vibe over here, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Turn on all notifications. That way you don't miss a future video because I post often. And this goes to every single person watching right now. Be sure to hit the like button. A lot of you have been shorting me on the like button. You watch the videos, but you don't hit the like button. It literally takes one second. 
hit the like button that helps the algorithm that lets the algorithm know to circulate this video i appreciate all of you for watching this video i hope this video has helped you out continue to be persistent when it comes to these fico credit scores if i went from poor to excellent you can do it as well this is water your soil and i'm out wait 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 before you leave, be sure to check out the description box below. That way you can have all the credit resources from Water Your Soil. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe button, the like button as well, all right? In the description box below, I always tell people, check out the description box below for extra resources from Water Your Soil. Part of the description box also showcases my book that I have. I have a book, it's been out for a while now, it's been out for years, it's titled, strategies to master credit the book is available it's on amazon it's on barnes and noble most online bookstores have the book and the book is basically about how fico credit scoring works once you understand how fico credit scoring works you're pretty much on your way to helping yourself build develop and maintain a good credit score so check the book out whenever you get a chance